In this video, we're going to focus on the photo stitch wizard. And I just want to point out at this, this moment that the photo stitch wizard is not meant to be the same as some of the other photo stitch programs that are out there on the market. And so if you're wanting it to be something like what another brand does, like maybe brother, um, this is going to be much different and it's probably not going to give you the results that you're looking for. And, um, that's a very difficult um, feature. It's something that has been asked for a lot. And it's just, um, it's a very difficult thing to get right. And anyone who's ever worked with Photo Stitch knows that the results vary greatly. It doesn't matter which program you use. It's very complicated. And um, that's why most people end up not using it. They think that they want it and they want to do it until they actually have the program and realize that it's much more difficult to get results you want. And um, so most people don't end up creating anything with it. And if you're wanting something like the brother one, I would just recommend going and getting the brother one. Um, I don't I don't know if we'll ever see it inside of Floriani software as a tool inside of the program because it's just, uh, the results are always going to vary. And that's all I'm going to kind of say about that. And it's something that, like I said, most people, I think, want something that they can do. And, but once they get it, they're a little bit disappointed with it because you really have to know what you're doing to be able to get good results. And no matter what you do, you're not always going to get the results you want. But, Let's go ahead and take a look at the photo stitch wizard inside of FTCU. And I need to go to this little wizard hat, click it, and go to the second icon, which is photo stitch wizard. I'm going to bring this up, and I don't have any images really on my computer, um, but I'm going to select one that comes with the program. I'm going to choose this dog here and choose open. And once I have that selected, now I can hit next. And here is where I can change the size. This obviously is really small at 45 millimeters. For some reason, even though my ruler says inches inside of the photo stitch wizard, it's still going to display it as millimeters. I'm going to make this um, 150 millimeters in width. And I can do things like reset the size. I can transform it like flipping it. So if you bring in your own image and you need to rotate it or anything like that, you can. Um, also I can select all and I can edit it using the default editor on my computer. Now I will say that that's kind of a difficult thing to utilize. If you need to do any cleanup on the image, you'll want to do that before you bring it in and let's just go to next. And this is where we actually generate the stitches and there's two ways. There's two types here. Stitch type is black and white or CMYK. If I choose black and white, all I need to do is hit generate stitches here and it will do that. Um, pattern size here is the pattern size of the stitches it creates. And if I hit generate stitches, you'll see this is the black and white. And really what it is, it's only creating black stitches. It's assuming you're going to have like a white background and it's just going to lay this pattern down and the pattern is either going to be more dense or less dense to allow more fabric to show through. If I choose CMYK, that's going to do um, four colors that it's going to utilize to create the look. So if I hit CMYK and hit generate, you'll see that it has a few different colors in it. First, let's take a look at black and white. I'm going to keep this default pattern size here at three and hit finish. And what that three is for the pattern size, oh, I forgot to change it. So I guess we're going to look at CMYK first. Um, I forgot to hit generate stitches before I hit open. But what that pattern size of three is, it's really talking about, um, we'll look at this as we do a slow redraw. Um, you can see that it's going to do that purple color. Okay, so here's, this is the pattern size right here. This is the three millimeter um, pattern. So it's repeating this pattern over and over again. So you can see um, it's creating, it did all the purple first, then it's doing this neon pink, um, and then it's going to do yellow and then black. And the combination 
and the density used in each of these patterns is what's going to give it the depth. And now I know I'm zoomed in, but I'm only zoomed in because I want you to see how these work together. So now you can see that purple was going left to right. The pink was going up and down as it was creating it. This yellow is going at like a 45 degree angle. And, but it's using the same patterns, but the density of the patterns are what change. So let's get over here to the black and you can see it's going in the opposite direction as the yellow. And so if I zoom out here and let's just do kind of the slow redraw again, you can see, see these things right here. It's leaving out some area that it doesn't feel like it needs as much purple. And same thing with this pink. You can see that there's just a line here, but it's using this pattern here. And you can see that that pattern changes too in here because it's giving it a little bit lighter pink because it doesn't need as much pink in that area. Or magenta is what it's supposed to be, I guess. And you can see that even like right here, you can start seeing the eyes, the nose, and that around the eye right here. So it's kind of creating different depth. You can see then the yellow comes in and it does the same thing. So it's going to be darker in some areas, lighter in others, and then get to the black. And you can see how that all kind of pieces together. Now, that's how the CMYK works. There's not a lot of editing you can do here. It creates it as stitches. So there's not like you can come in and change the densities and different things like that. You would just need to change the um, pattern size if you want it to be a little bit different. Um, and you do that when you go through the wizard. But that's what the CMYK creates. It's four colors that are stacked on top of each other. Each um, is going a different direction, each color. And it's the combination of all the colors that give you the depth of the image. So let's go ahead and create a new page here. And I'm going to go back into this photo stitch wizard. And I'm going to use this same design and hit next. And I'm going to change this to 150 and hit next. And I'm going to change this down to um, 1.5. So half of the pattern size. Okay. And I'm at black and white and I'm going to hit generate stitches. And then I'm going to hit finish. So you can see it tells me what the stitch count is going to be right here. 54,000 stitches. If I change this to three and hit generate, notice how much fewer stitches there are. And the reason is, is because three millimeters is longer than 1.5 millimeters. So it's using less stitches to create the pattern. When I go down to 1.5, that's a pretty small stitch. And that's why it's taking so much more. But I just want to show you this as an example. And I have the black and white. I generated the stitches and then I hit finish. And you'll see that the only thing I have is one object and it's in black. So the white is really kind of your fabric. So let's go to the white background there. And so you can see um, by creating it in a much tighter stitch, it looks like it's getting a little bit more detail there. Um, now, it's way more stitches, and this would be pretty stiff of a design. And that's why I recommend doing, like, at least the default of 3. You might go to 2.5, but you don't really want to go smaller than that. If you go to something like 4, it's um, it's going to be even looser, but you're probably not going to see as much detail. And we'll take a look at that. But you can see how this is created. This is gone. This goes one row at a time all the way through. And it's just uh, changing up the densities of the patterns here. And if I zoom in, you'll see that this pattern size is much smaller. So if I go to millimeters, if I go to metric here, um, we're at 1.5. So this pattern right here is 1.5 millimeters. If I go to the previous one, um, let's hide a couple of these colors so I can just focus on one. You'll see that this one, the pattern size is going to be three millimeters. 
So that's this little pattern right here. So that's the difference. And um, that's why there's so many more stitches in this one is because the stitch length is so much smaller to create it. And let's go ahead now and do one more. And I'm going to come to the wizard here. I'm gonna do that same design. And I'm gonna do it the, the 150. And I'm gonna do black and white. And this time I'm gonna choose four millimeter stitch generate and hit finish and you'll you'll see right away like the detail in this one it's the same size as this one big can you tell the difference there by making it a larger pattern you're going to lose a little bit of detail and but at the same time the smaller one's going to be so stiff if you do it at 1.5 so the default of three is pretty good 2.5 to three is going to give you decent results um but if you go to something like four you can see it'll really start kind of losing a little bit of detail this one right here was using um three turn those colors back on and let's go ahead and just for the sake of it let's do a 2.5 and just see what that looks like so i'm going to do the same thing here And I'm going to go to CMYK and I'm going to do 2.5. It's not much smaller, but it is smaller. I'm going to generate and hit finish. And so this is what 2.5 looks like. This is what um, three millimeters looks like. Let's change this to a white background here. So you can see just looking at the detail, it looks like the 2.5 is a little crisper and more detailed it's not going to add a ton more stitches but it definitely does so let's take a look at this this is 40,000 stitches and this one is 27,800 so just by changing it from a three millimeter density to a, a 2.5 you're adding 13,000 stitches now this design um, if I select it all here and I go to the transform is six inches tall so we're at six inches tall by five. So it's a decent size design. Um, but that's the kind of difference it makes. But the detail, if you're looking for more detail, you would need to go to a smaller stitch. Now, I'm not a big fan of photo stitch of any program. And I'll just throw that out there. I'm just not a fan of it. Um, I think that things need to be, when you're trying to get detail on a photo, it kind of, needs to be more manually done but I'm going to show you um, later kind of a thing that I like to do with some designs and I, I do that with the auto artwork wizard um, and working with images and making my own variation of a photo stitch that's a little bit more friendly and stitching it out but that is the photo stitch wizard and in the next one um, let's see, we're going to be focused on the auto artwork wizard.